Time travel as a concept can make or break a series for some, as how the series itself handles the consequences of actions made by the time traveler is very important. Though some series use time travel as more of a means to isekai their protagonist into another world in a sense, given if you go back far enough, no matter if it's the same planet, it's still a very different world for most. And seeing how these characters, who are lost in time, can use their either future or other worldly knowledge to solve issues that they run into. And one series that does this and has me completely hooked right now is Sengoku Kamachi Korotan, or the tale of the small town hardship in the Sengoku era, an agricultural comic. Sengoku Kamachi Korotan is a web novel turned shonen manga series that started up in 2017 and is currently running in the Comic Earthstar magazine. It was created through the combined efforts of the writer Kyochi Kuto and artist Sawada Hajime, and covers the adventures of Shizuko Ayano Kyoji, who was just an ordinary high school girl from the 21st century who has been studying agriculture and has a big fascination with history, specifically the actions of Oda Nobunaga. And then one day, while buying a magazine for one of her relatives, Relatives, she manages to slip through time and end up in the distant past, and finds herself under the employment of her favorite historical icon, Oda Nobunaga. Now she only has one goal, survive the Sengoku era for as long as she can. And while Shizuko may not have any magic powers or any plans to actively change the future, what she does have is an extensive knowledge on agriculture and a big bag of 21st century technology and information, and using these tools she can possibly extend her own usefulness to Nobunaga and avoid being disposed of. Which actually leads me to one of my favorite aspects of the series. Sengoku Kamachi has probably one of my favorite interpretations of Oda Nobunaga, as it neither demonizes or hero worships the man, portraying him as the ultimate opportunist that he was. And while his actions can be perceived as cruel and his presence as scary, he isn't one to let pride get in the way of his conquests, recruiting anyone and everyone that is useful to him. Along with this, his back and forth with Shizuko are some of the highest moments in the series showing that they are both on somewhat of an equal footing, especially early on when Nobunaga is trying to pry information out of her and she's just trying to make it day by day without changing the future too drastically if she can. And on top of this, the series is also full of little blurbs of information that I just love. All sorts of things that are relevant to the story and help paint a picture of how passionate Kyochi Kuto seems to be about their story. From explaining either the proper name use etiquette in the Sengoku era, to certain aspects about agriculture and how some plants and vegetables never actually reached Japan until around the modern era that we know today, and how Shizuko would be changing the future by introducing these new plants to these people. And each of these little knowledge dropping segments always managed to teach me something new or help me keep up with the characters of the time period and their perspectives, which is much appreciated from Kyoshi Kuto, who, as far as I could find, is a beginner to the industry of manga, starting out with Sengoku Kamachi as their web novel until Sawada Hajime started helping them with the manga version, with Hajime Sensei being a veteran of the media, working on series like Blood of Matul, Orphan, and a few other. And it was Hajime Sensei's art that really caught my eye right away, as where it lacks visual fidelity, it makes up so much in personality. Shizuko and Nobunaga specifically tell a lot about themselves in just how they're drawn. And more on that, Shizuko is also a great example of a character who is designed to be understood to be either cute or moderately attractive without relying too heavily on sex appeal that would just make her stand out too much much, which is rather refreshing and makes some characters comments about her appearance feel not as forced. Along with this, I feel like how the series handles Shizuko's character is actually really cool, as she's neither totally helpless or completely headstrong, and to solve a lot of her problems she's forced to rely on others to achieve her goals, like when she needs all the farmers to help tend to the land and grow the crops correctly, as even though she has advanced knowledge from the future on how to grow crops great, she's still only one person. But she isn't fully reliant on others either, as she is willing to act go out and hunt pests on her own like deer to protect her crop. Shizuko is honestly peak Japanese tomboy waifu material, and I give her a tomato out of tomato. Oh yeah, that's right, this series is about motherfucking agriculture, my man, and it shows how the power to grow and maintain crops consistently can bring someone a lot of fame and value. Though the writing around Shizuko's own advanced knowledge is actually really great, as she passes it off as non-bon or non-Japanese in nature, which instantly interests Nobunaga. But she doesn't keep this knowledge all to herself as well, as she works to spread her wealth of information 
to the everyman of Japan, not only to enlighten them, but to protect herself as well, since if any nation caught wind of her being the sole source of information for Nobunaga, she would likely be targeted and assassinated without mercy. And all this on top of the fact that it's just really interesting to see Shizuko keep being placed in charge of task after task that grows infinitely more challenging as time goes on, and she has to work to figure out a solution to it using both the tools and limitations of the time period that she's in is extremely enjoyable, especially when she ends up discovering something new along the way. Like when she cultivated just a shitload of shiitake mushrooms with the intention of using them as food, only to learn about 15 kilograms worth of them is enough to buy a massive castle. Which is a nice way to show that even though Shizuko came here with a lot of information and a lot of knowledge on the period that she's in, she's still blind to some aspects about the Sengoku period. So hopefully if there was anything here that you heard that interested you that you'll go out and you'll read the series. I can't recommend it enough, especially if you enjoy stories about early Japan. Right now there isn't really an official translation for the series, but there is a fan translation being updated very consistently by Yada in translation. They're doing God's work as far as I'm concerned, so please go and show them some support. And with that all said and done, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like in the future, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash guy. Patreon is a very useful tool. It helps support the channel. It helps keep it flowing, so any little bit helps. And if you want to use your advanced knowledge and bring it back to ancient times, well, you can do so by buying a copy of Shimonetta, A Boring World Where the Concept of Dirty Jokes Doesn't Exist at buyshimonetta.com.